In physical education, it's very difficult to have peer assessments from students and process that data that you get from peer assessments into something that's usable that you can deliver in a timely and efficient manner. So this is a system that I've set up to do that and I use it a couple times per unit. All you really need to start off is a class list uh, with um, last name, first name, email. I've put my email address for this sample. The next thing I want to show you is you have to set up a Google form. So if you have a Google account and you don't know how to make a Google form, it's pretty easy. So first thing I always put is observer name. This is the name of the student. So you'll go back to your spreadsheet with your class list on it and then choose whatever names you need and then just copy them and paste them in the choose from a list question type. So it has all the names right there for you. The next thing I always do is include the rubric. So I always do a screenshot uh, picture of it and then I just insert it, insert image, and then it will have my rubric for whatever unit I'm in or whatever I want them to assess. The next thing you'll want to do is, and this is the time consuming part, is to enter the names. Now this is nice. Once you have it set up, you can reuse it for several units in the future. But you want to set up a grid and then you're going to type in the name and then all the rows should be the skills that you want them assessing. And then in the columns you're going to put one, two, three, four, or however many uh, rubric levels you have. So you'll go through and you'll type in the names. You can duplicate the one prior to it and then type in the name over the top until you've typed in and created one assessment for each student. And then when you view the live form, it should have your title at the top, your instructions, your observer name drop down box, the rubric, and then an assessment for each student in the class. In order to view this rubric, you can share the link to it. So you can either just share the link via email or your school's website. Uh, I like to copy it and make a QR code. So I'll paste it into qrstuff.com. It'll generate a QR code. And then I copy the QR code. And then I paste it onto a... Google Doc. So I'll just create a Google Doc, put the title at the top, I'll paste the QR code in there, and what I'll use this for is during activities such as games, and I do a lot of sport ed units, so when one team is not playing in the game, I have six iPads and I'll have them scan the QR code, it'll take them to this form, they'll put their name as the observer, and then they will assess all of the players on their team, and they do this secretly, they don't show anyone, they don't talk about it, but they read the rubric, they assess everyone, and then they submit it. Uh, each player from the team will do this on their own, again it's secret so that they're just sharing their feedback with me, the teacher and then they can continue to practice after that. It usually takes about 90 seconds or two minutes uh, to assess their teammates and, and themselves. And then it comes into the response box so I can take a look and see all the responses that have occurred and I can take a look at it. Now it's a really long horizontal spreadsheet right now and in order to do something with this data, I had to come up with a good system. So here's an example of what it would look like after you know 10 or so responses. Uh, lots of feedback, but what do you do with it? It's really, really tough to take this data and process it normally. So what I came up with is a way to copy all the answers. 
So I'll select everything and I'll copy it. And then I've created a template. And in this template, there's a few things that I have set up for you. So I'll select the template. And at the top, it will have HRM. That stands for our heart rate monitor numbers. So we have heart rate monitors. So each student knows their number. Uh, group, that's what we call our grades or our classes. And then it'll have observer name. Now, you used to be able to paste right into the spreadsheet. But for whatever reason, in Google Drive, you can't do that anymore. So I've had to set up a new sheet. So you can see at the bottom, that's sheet 7. And what you do is you paste into that sheet your answers. And then you can copy it. And this is the part that makes the magic happen. You select Paste Transpose. And what that does is it takes all the data that was horizontal and flips it so that it's vertical, up and down. And for each student, you can see along the left-hand side, it has each student's name and the category from the rubric that they were assessed on. Then you just copy that, paste it into the template, and I always do paste value. And it's nice and neat right in there. And you can see the observer's name at the top, so that's the person who did the assessment. All the way over to the right hand side of the template are a series of formulas. And the first formula I want to show you is the one that takes the data about each category and then puts it so that it's horizontal, but it's all in one row. And you'll see why in just a moment. So that equation takes the vertical data and then puts it into its own column. So there's mean and then mode, which I prefer the mode. I think it's more accurate. And the mode is just what answer occurred most frequently for that student. And then you can see the column headings across the top. Mean AB means advancing ball, uh, S is support, D is defense, and SP is sportsmanship. So those are the four categories from the rubric. Even though they're in the row that says advancing, the data is actually the title heading across the top. And it has to be horizontal for our mail merge. And then the last columns there give you the verbiage from the rubric based on what numbers are in the mode. So you can see the lookup formula up at the top. And that is seeking out the data right here at the bottom. So rarely, some of the time, most of the time, consistently. So if their mode answers are 1, 2, 3, and 4, it will automatically populate that column with that verbiage from the rubric. So what you can do with this now is start to process the data and make sure that it's accurate. And the way to view it is you just do a sort and you take away the blanks and the NAs. And then when you hit OK, you have all of your students, all of the data, nice and neatly organized for you to view it. And this is part of the processing. Now the last few columns I always leave and I indicate them in red. This is any answers I need to go back and update. So. I use the student's input, but I also want to give it the eye test, and if I need to change or update anything to bring that mode up, I'll use those columns to do so. And then once I have all the data, and it looks like it's accurate in my opinion, and from the feedback from the students, I can then start to send the data to the individuals. So I copy it all and then I paste it in the paste sorted values tab. You can see that at the bottom. And then I paste that from the mean on. Now like I said, I don't really use the mean. I use the mode. And so I have all the students there. And another thing I like to do is check the name. So you can see the column that says name check. I'll paste it in there and then I'll give it the eye test to make sure I'm using the correct student's data. 
And so I have it all here ready to go for my next step, which is an autocrat mail merge. So the first thing you need to do when you make an autocrat mail merge is to create a template that you use for your mail merge. So I have my logo at the top, I have first name, last name, group, sport, and then I have a table with all my categories. And then you can see the brackets. That's going to indicate that individual student's data, pay, you know, and it'll automatically merge it into there. So once I have that template, I'll select my, my sheets template again. I'll go to the paste sorted values, autocrat mail merge. And then I will go up to the top and select add-ons, autocrat launch. Now this program is awesome. I'll create a new merge job. And it'll take a second to load. And then I'll choose my template that I created, which is a Google Doc. So I'll select that, select my Google Doc, and that will be my template to merge all the data into. I'll have to name the merge job, and this is Australian Rules Football, Autocrat. And then everything that was in that template from the doc has to be accurate. So I'll have to change the last name, first name, make sure those are accurate, and double check to make sure all those are what I want it to be from my sheet. Then I can name the file that's being created. Up at the top, you use the dollar sign and then the category name. So I do group, heart rate monitor number, last name, first name, sport, and then I'll just type in feedback because I want the word feedback there. And then I'll do current date. And it will automatically put the current date. My students don't have Google Drive, so I create a PDF. And I email it to them. So I do the email address and then the title of the email. And then I'll type a little message to them. And anytime you see that dollar sign, that indicates the category from the sheet that you're using. So I'll type them a little message and then attached it will be the PDF file. And I always copy it just in case it doesn't work so I don't have to retype everything. So it's a PDF attachment. I'll save that. And then next you can preview to see what it will look like. So I'll select preview and it will show me my first student preview. And I'll take a look and make sure that everything looks good. I can take a look at other students if I want, if I want to hit next, but I want to, I want to merge it. So when I hit run merge, it will now merge all the data into that Google Doc, create a PDF file, and then it will email that file to each student. Now, in this spreadsheet, I put my own email address, and so I'll get an email for each one of these as it's being sent out. So you can see on the right side there, it's evaluating and creating each student and you can see up at the top when I receive that email. So the students will be receiving that email. They'll get to open up that attachment and see how they're doing currently according to that rubric. And this whole process, once I've had the students submit their peer assessments, I can usually do this in about 20 minutes. And that includes processing, you know, cutting and pasting and making sure that it merges. It'll also create a file, and I can see each one of the student's files. And then I can also check, you know, this is what the student's inbox would say. So 
have the message and it would have the attachment and then they can view it. So this is a real game changer for me to assess all my students and give them feedback as to how they're doing according to a rubric and it's pretty quick and easy. And it also gives them a chance to learn how to be objective and have a better understanding about how they're doing according to a rubric and it uses the data that they input to inform me the teacher about how they feel they're performing. Now if your students don't have email, say they're elementary age students, you can do the same process with pretty much any type of data, well, whether it's skill or behavioral type things. You can do the same process and not email it, but just have auto create the document and then select all download as a zip file and then print all of them so that you can distribute them during class. I really hope that you found this video helpful. All the links to the templates are at the bottom so that you can use them, duplicate them, and modify them for your purposes. And if you have any questions always feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or email I am more than happy to help out. Thank you very much.